347. <laughs> we kill it with rhythm. <laughs> we kill it. I was 100% the class clown, like 100%. I, uh, I couldn't tell by the outfit. <laughs> I know, right? When he told me he didn't have $1,100, I said, fuck. Honey, not $100. $100. $1,100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $100. $
so kind of what led me to be a comedian before I get to like when I started being a comedian, I was always like the life of the party, I guess you could say, or always yeah. like a uh, like the class clown. Yeah, I was a hundred percent the class clown, like a hundred percent. I uh, I couldn't tell by the outfit. <laughs> I know, right? This, I bought this outfit for the show. <laughs> I, I think what it what it really came down to, so we were talking about this before it started. So my mother had bipolar and schizophrenia, so she was in a mental hospital majority of my life, like growing up. And uh, so when I was young, I used to be really sad all the time and like cry myself to sleep and shit. And like, I think when you come from a, when, you, when you're surrounded by a lot of negativity, all I wanted to do was make myself and everybody positive and stuff. So it was like, uh, 100%. Yeah, so it, so it kind of, I was always trying to bring people up to my, like, to my vibration do you before think I knew it's the true? word. Yeah, do you think it's true? I've noticed this, that people with trauma are funnier. They're just funnier people. 100%. Yes, and if, if you 100%. haven't been through trauma, if you were born with a golden spoon in your mouth and had everything handed to you, you're just not As funny. Normally like, silver spoon, but that damn you up okay. Yeah, <laughs> silver spoon, golden, golden spoon. Golden spoon, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, you're not funny. You're not a funny person. I think it takes trauma I, to be funny. I, I agree and disagree because I think that, I think it's a human gift to... To be able to laugh. When you six foot tall and you black and you work in Fashion Valley, you can't say a lot of crazy things sometimes. I'll be saying real wild shit to them too. Like, hello? <laughs> How you doing? A uh, hundred thousand ashy ass elbows. <laughs> Y'all don't know nothing about that. It's a lot of Caucasian Americans in the room. <laughs> Okay, when your skin needs moisture, you need some kind of lubrication, you know, cocoa butter, Jergens, WD-40. So my next question is, was your plan always comedy? Were you always planning to be a comedian? Fuck no. Really? I wanted to be a bartender, uh, astronaut, <laughs> uh... Were you never a, bar a bartender? I feel like everyone's been a bartender. <laughs> no, nah, that's in California because you get paid. Like, okay, yeah. Okay, so I want you to realize in every other state other than California, if you are like in the service industry, you get paid like a dollar of ninety-five an hour. Oh yeah, <laughs> like, well, yeah, you gotta get tips. Like yeah. plus tips. Like in California, you get minimum wage plus tips. Like yeah. Cali is the only place where like being in, the, in like the. Uh, what is the service industry? It's it, like, it, you make a lot works. of money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like worth it. Like the, yeah. Okay, so you wanted to be a bartender, an it astronaut? It was like a bartender, astronaut, uh, uh, doctor, uh, I forgot. So that was what really made it, you choose comedian? <laughs> like, how did you go from doctor to, you know what? I don't want to do surgery, I just want to tell jokes. Yeah, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I, um, okay, so... Uh, I gotta kind of give a little backstory if that's cool. Yeah, you got that's time? cool. Okay. Um, so graduated from high school. I didn't know what the fuck I was gonna do. My well, my bad. Right before graduation, I didn't. I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. I'm a. I thought I was gonna go to the military. So I took the ASVAP and to get in the. I was going to Marines. To get in the Marines, you need like 45. I got like 90, or I got 89. And that's like Is it's. This I, a it's test? Yeah, it's, a, it's the aptitude test to get oh. into the military. Okay. And like, it's out of ninety nine, I think, <laughs> or like eighty nine. Eighty nine. That's not bad, though, is it? <laughs> I got like, yeah, that's like the top percent, yeah, one that's percent, really or good. five percent, or something like that. Okay. So I got like all these scholarships, you know, whatever. So, yeah. um, I did everything. I did all the PT. Dude came to my house. I uh, watched all the videos, and I'm with, living with Granny at the time. So I get in the car, and. Uh, he comes to my high school because you know, I'm still in high school and granny has to sign up for it because I'm still in high school So he comes to my school. I'm finna get in the car with him and go to MEPS So MEPS is where they do the physical and then you sign your contract And it's like two hours away. So I get in the car I call the cop, my... not the car the cop <laughs> Got it. Keep going There it go. I forgot. I forgot. I got an accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Midwest. That's, that's the Chicago accent. Really. So okay, so Got out the car, and then, or I got in the car, and then the dude was like, uh, you ready to go? 
called Granny, and I'm like, Granny, I'm about to go to MEPS, sign the thing, and be in a Marine. And she's like, you better take your ass back in that classroom. Oh, yeah. So, uh, if I didn't say, Granny is the most thug, gangster, I beat your ass, amazing, kind-hearted, loving, you had give a you her last. Granny. Yeah, yeah. But she'll like give you her last. Like she'll like beat your ass and then give you Sunday dinner. And like That's a good granny. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good granny. Yeah. Exactly. And and she's the reason I'm funny is because of her. So she's okay. way funnier than me. So like, she passed it over. She passed it to all my family. I'm okay. just the only one that had the cojones to like try to make it a job. Yeah, the only one with the cojones to wear this outfit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, uh, she's like, you better take your ass back in that classroom. And I was like, I looked at the dude like, whoop, you hurt the woman. And then I took my ass back in the classroom. And he was like, no. Okay, so you quit that. So, yeah. So, that was going to be like my after school thing. So, or post high school uh, thing. And then I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm finna do. And my advisor was like, what do you like to do? And I said, talk. (laughs) <laughs> and she was like <laughs> She's like I know <laughs> Well <laughs> uh, Ball State University Which is in Indiana I know Ball State Oh what yeah. you know about Ball State Aren't they good at a sport Like basketball? Men's volleyball uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn I've heard of Ball State before we Have was, they we, not been good at we, we was good at basketball okay, that's And then in 08 They was like undefeated okay, in football Okay 08 They was undefeated okay, in football okay, I went to KU in 08 we okay. were really good at football and basketball, yeah. and I could have sworn I heard of Ball State, yeah, and we, that's where I We were undefeated. Going. Yeah, okay. that, that year we were undefeated. Okay, so, that's yeah. why. So, uh, I didn't go till 11, though, but... <laughs> so, I'll be, uh... Okay, whatever, pass, pass <laughs> over. <laughs> so, she was like, uh, this Ball State is a top five school for radio and television broadcasting oh, and journalism sweet. because they have this place called the, uh, the David Letterman Building. So I don't know if you know who David Letterman is. No, who is he? You don't know who David Letterman is, for real? <laughs> Kidding. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, like, like a lot of people don't like. That's sad. everybody. Me and younger doesn't know who David Letterman is. Even David Letterman he old has as fuck. his own Netflix show now, and he got a full Santa Claus. Movie. I know, I know. But you got to remember though, he also was like damn near eighty. Like, I didn't know. He that was popping. There's a like, David Letterman building. Yeah. At Ball State. Yeah. So he donated like. I don't know, Did like ten million there? dollars. Yeah, he went to he went to Ball State. No, he started journalism at Ball. He started being a comedian at Ball State, Aww. and like his journalism at Ball State. Okay, that's cool. So, so I went to Ball State because of the David Letterman thing, which that's is cool. super ironic. I never really thought about that until now that he's a comedian. And this is in Indiana. Yeah, this is in Muncie. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So, so Indiana has nothing except like corn, coal colleges, and the KKK. And David Letterman. Well, he's part of the colleges, but yeah, <laughs> and the KKK. So in Indiana, we have homeless people. They're just a little bit different than the people here without homes. Uh, I know we've all seen the people here without homes. You know, we was on Lake Sham before. They always doing like some kind of weird Bambi walk, walking down the street, just, they looking at you too, like, what's going on? They hold something random as hell though. <laughs> you don't know where they got it from. You be in the corner like, where did he get that TV antenna? <laughs> We at the DMV. <laughs> he looking at you. <laughs> he always ask you half a question. <laughs> Never get it all the way out though. Cause he always buckled before it. Can I get two quarters, three done? <laughs> hey, you gotta get up on it. <laughs> Whatever you got breaking half, he'd be like, no, no. You're like, I just saw this on Lifetime. So, did you major in journalism and com- So did I. Cheers. Salute. Here we are on the patio. Come on now. Radio so you TV. You could be a news anchor out. like me. 100%. And you could wear I was. That hat. I 100% was. Okay. Yeah. We should do it. Okay. I, I Tonight was at 10. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> Tonight at 10, there PB. was a man seen with a sombrero on a black and white carpet. Carpeted patio. What do you have to say? <laughs> he had on tennis players on his shirt, which he called his uh, not scare white women outfit. He was from Gary, Indiana, because <laughs> we've never heard of. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Using his black privilege. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be an anchor. No, you didn't. Yeah, that's like the 100%. 
you know, I, I can't totally see you being an anchor. I can't you tell you that though. Anchor. I can't tell you that, you know, because you already won. So that's no, like no, very cliche. But you would be a good anchor because you have confidence, you have charisma, and you just, you know, you got the look, you have the voice. You could, I, I mean, you that. could still do it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Dreams are yeah. not over. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. I'm Whoever's just, hiring, I'm gonna just be hire my... me first, and then you know <laughs> he's available. We'll just start our own news channel from the beach. But anyways, okay, so you were... We always got that one drunk uncle. Mine was just ashy and drunk. (laughs) (laughs) He just always showed up 30 minutes late, didn't bring nothing. He just knocked over all the plates and nephews. Looked like he danced. He just like... (laughs) He always looking for something he didn't bring. I don't got the lighter. They always give him the bad, wrong responsibilities. Like the fireworks, Uncle, like the fireworks. <laughs> He's like, I don't have to learn. Uh, I was thinking, like, it's crazy because I suck at, like, dating apps. But think about before we had smartphones. The first Tinder was really those late night chat lines. Remember those when it was random as hell? And you used to have to make a, like, the commercial would come on at, like, 12.42 p.m. Are you feeling sexy tonight? <laughs> And it was always a woman, please call 888-LIT-BUTT <laughs> and talk to the sexy single song. <laughs> I, I, I'll make a long story short. Pretty much they put all the black people and the hood white people on the same floor in our building. Uh-huh. And, and okay, so I don't know how to explain it, but that they put all the all the hood people on the same floor in a way. Oh, and you're saying they separated it. They yeah. segregated it. So, yeah, so our building, in Johnson 2011. B. In 2011. Yeah, so our building, Johnson B., I mean, it wasn't it wasn't said like that, but it, but did. we all looked. I was like, oh, nigga, we over the hood. We up. So our building was eight floors. Third floor, fourth floor, and eighth floor were boy, were male. Every other floor was female. Okay. And third floor was where we was at. Third floor. Third floor was where we yeah. was at. I was in a dorm called G- GSP. It stands for Girl State Prison. <laughs> it didn't stand for that. It was like Gertrude. Yeah, you know. but, y'all was but okay, y'all. keep going. <laughs> okay, so so we we were in the hood, but across the street was the project. So you know the freshman oh, dorms. Okay. So we weren't in the bad bad. <laughs> um, and we end up uh. Here, let me say it like this. So we had our first meeting. Our first meeting, we came into like the floor meeting, and you have like a. a RA, right? Your yeah, RA yeah. who is the head of the floor, is supposed yeah, to be like the, the boss. Yeah. We in the meeting and I'm sitting down, everybody's quiet. I live with my, my roommate Raul, who I had just previously met. He's part of third flow. And I was like, I don't want to have a random roommate that only watches his draws on every blue moon. Oh yeah, no. So I'm trying to live with you. And he was like, same thing, bro. <laughs> we in Indiana, so okay. people carry themselves different. So like, you hit you it remember. off. Yeah, exactly. So we was like, cool. We both smoke weed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We from the same area, cool. So we was roommates. And we're in the room uh, listening to the RA. 20 minutes in the meeting, uh, my brother Reggie, AJ, Tim, Gabe, Teddy Long. Uh, I think that was it. They came into the room 20 minutes late, loud as fuck. Like, yeah, what's going on, y'all? They had food. Uh, and I was like, I'm going to hang out with these people. Yeah, you want to be with those people. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I'll never forget this. So Gabe... And this is all leading to why I'm a comedian. So Gabe, uh, the first day we're in college, this is our first day in college. Nobody knows each other. I can't believe you remember this. Like, I don't have any memory of college. Like, it's all of us. <laughs> it's a blur. You remember the first day. Like, oh, it was 100%. yesterday. Was it yesterday no, for you? Okay. No, no, no. Just making sure. Okay. But it's a, if I, all these people I'm speaking of, we're still friends. Like, still it's a friends. lifelong thing. That's like, we're good. still an organization. That's like, so cool. Like, we still, it, it's crazy. I love that, though. And I think it's I think it's God because like I was like it is. God can you help me have a like a family that's functional yes. and he was like I'm gonna fucking yes. introduce you to these people that Here you don't you know. Go. Yep. So uh, so it's quiet as hell and it, it, the thing's over and Ari's like you got a question anybody got a question Gabe is like I have a question so Gabe is about five three oh he has a huge beard remember we're all eighteen so he is like a full beard like five grown three man really beard. Short. Say that again. 5'3 is really short. Yeah, he's really short, but got a really thick beard and like a super receded hairline. Oh, no. And wear glasses. So he looks like a, a short, old-ass man. Kind of like, sounds like a rabbi. Yeah. I can only say that because I'm Jewish. 
<laughs> I mean, you do got the black rabbi look. So, so he like a look like a grown old man. Like, so he like, okay, so I understand we're all in college. And 60 people in like a small ass room. I know we're all in college and we all are trying to have a good time. Um, I do have a very hard class on Wednesday, blah, 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 something like that. He was like, so I only have one thing I want to ask from everybody. One rule. No bitches on Tuesday. And then this is the first day of college. Wait, why Tuesday? Because he said he had a class in the morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so they're like, no bitches on Tuesday. So you're like, I like this guy. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. That's hilarious. I love Tuesdays. So <laughs> I would, yeah, I would rather, like, I love Tuesdays. Where you're from, there's Tuesday a song is our, about Tuesday. It's also associated with food in California. Okay, but so. that song, Tuesday, who's it by? I love McCona. Going up. I love McCona. On a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't into Tuesdays. No. Okay. So like on Tuesdays it was like uh, I'm telling a you Tuesdays mug. is the day. <laughs> like you did the say fact that. that your RA like discriminated against Tuesdays. <laughs> like Tuesday is the day. Hey you guys, don't you love Tuesdays? Thank you. It's like tacos and shit. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> you said okay. no bitches on Tuesday. Okay, right. fast forward. Uh, me and all these people become best friends. We're like an uh, organization. Is this a like click. five people now? Or uh, like now we're about eight. Eight. You're about okay. seven, eight people. Then we pick up a few people on the way. There's one dude. Uh, he was super cool. His name is Ryan Leonard. He's still my brother. So you got a lot of R's. You got Raul. You got Raul, Ryan. Raul, Ryan. Uh, is there a Rico or nah. like a Richard? Nah. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Um, shout out Third Flow. Uh, but, but here to fast forward through that, uh, we met we met uh, Ryan, and he was like a dude from buttfuck nowhere. He's from like the sticks, Indiana, and like the most placid, peaceful place you've ever imagined. And he was like, you guys want to hang out with me? Awesome. <laughs> so we end up calling him Token, because he's like the token <laughs> white guy. So, and then we meet a dude from the area. And he ended up becoming president of Third Flow because he was like the coolest white dude ever. <laughs> and we end up, he end up, uh, we end up giving him a name, Swagger Man. So, uh, <laughs> so you have to say Swagger with the it's R. Swagger Man, yeah, it's Swagger Man. Swagger Man, no, it's Swagger, man. It's Swagger, it's Swagger Man. Okay, it's Swagger yeah. Man. Okay. Swagger Man. Okay. He from, he from, he from like you know the area. So Swagger Man is the president, the white dude, and then you know, and then we encompass this Third Flow thing. And when we do that, uh, two weeks. Before I went to college, for the first time I ever watched American Pie, Beta House. Yes. Have you seen American Pie? Yes, I have. Have you seen Beta House? That's the is one that where. Is that a separate movie or is that in the movie? Well, it's that's the name of the movie. So you Beta know how House? it's different American oh, Pies. Oh, I don't know what you're, I've seen a few American Pies. So this is the one where the main character is in high school and he goes to college. He goes to his college orientation and Stifler is his cousin. Okay. And I, Stifler is that dude. All I remember is like the whipped cream and the cherry on the butt. <laughs> I don't the... remember that one. I don't remember that much either. How do you not remember that part? He's I... fully nude and he has whipped cream all right here and he has like. Well, that's the part you like. So okay. I don't know about that. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> He's like whipped cream. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Where are we going with this story? Okay. So all of that. Um. I watched American Pie Beta House two weeks before I went to college. I said, fuck, I'm going to be the black Stifler. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I <know> Stifler. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to be the black Stifler. So uh, I threw parties. I started throwing parties. The Where, first one the was dorm? on my birthday. No, fuck no. We, I would go to a whole bunch of different people's houses and I'd be like, we throw the best parties in college. Can I throw a party at your house? And they would say yes or no. And then I would do it at different people's houses so I never got okay, caught by so the police. you were like the party boy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, and to promote the parties, I would ha I would walk through campus and give people flyers. You made flyers? And then, oh, yeah. you were serious about it. Like, you went to Kinko's? Like, what are we talking? Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was wow. like, whatever the Muncie, Indiana Kinko's is. I, yeah. I can't, I never got a flyer in college to go to a party. That's crazy. No. That was a weak ass college. I, I didn't get a flyer. That was a weak ass college. Yeah. What college I, you went to? I went to KU, University of Kansas. I oh, went to a fuck. lot of parties though. All I did was party. We didn't need flyers. Yeah. But you know, I could have used a good flyer wait, for wait, my wait, scrapbook. Wait, wait. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just knew about them. I don't know. I never saw any fly. Maybe there were people hanging out, handing out Kinko's fly. Yeah, you just didn't use one okay, around. Okay, you yeah. just you was so in, you I just knew so about in. it. You didn't need I the was fly. So in you on know the where flow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed that part. So our organization was called Third Flow. Oh, it was? Because oh. they put all the hood niggas on Third Flow. But was flow. it Third Flow or it's Third, third Flow? It's Third Flow. Third Flow, okay. It's spelled 3RD4LOW. Okay. Wait, how did we get here? Where is this story going? Because I don't know how we got here. Okay, so we're, we're to me, handing out flyers. Okay. So me handing out flyers every day to about, I'd say, That's probably about hustle. hundreds of, a couple hundred people, two, three hundred people a day. Oh, wow. And I would have to... Make them laugh within the first five. Hey, what's up? You like you like to laugh? You like you want to come to a party? You like you want to go to? Uh, so I did that every day for uh, like some years. So I didn't mention that I also threw the biggest college parties in Indiana for about two years from doing that. So the first party was crazy. I don't get into details, but I it, it started at eleven and I looked down. I was making it juice. Was Six a.m. And at eleven fourteen, I looked up and it was three hundred people in front. Oh. Of me. And like the teacher's assistants was there, like the fucking graduate Teacher student, assi- okay. graduate students was there. Maybe like you should be a party planner. Yeah, no, but I, I don't want to. I, I used to, but I don't want to be like. Uh, yeah, no, that just didn't want to be <laughs> that representation. I, I didn't want to okay. represent like yeah. getting drunk and shit, even though I'm a comedian, but still. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I start throwing parties, and then we start hosting events. And I would be the host. So everybody else would do rap or poems or sing and dance. And I would host Oh my it. gosh, this was like a full out party. Yeah. Like I never had a party yeah. with a host and yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And then we would do the parties. And then after party. And then people were like, yo, third floor is the shit. Like from senior to freshman. Everybody so knew who he was. they let you do that in the dorms? No, these are in people's houses. Oh, okay. In the yeah, dorms. these people's houses. So, um, so that built us like a little buzz. And now you're a host today. Yeah, 100%. So you're saying college partying prepared you for your job today. 100%. Or at Not least pro- the classes, the partying. At least <laughs> th- prepare, promoting, throwing, and setting up the party. 100%. Wow. And then, um, so this is the end all to be all. So this brings it all in together. So I did all that, and we're doing it for like two years, and it's like 800. The biggest party I had was 800 people. Wow. For homecoming, and uh, and that was all you, like you're uh, the promoter. It was me, me and one other person. So that one was me, other person. Every other party is just me. Uh, my biggest one, other than that, was like four, uh, like four eighty or something like that. So uh, yeah. Did, would, would you say like everyone knew you on campus? Hundred percent. Like, everyone knew who you were. Hundred percent. Like Walter people Ford. right now still be like, yo, third floor, fucking like. No way. Remember the third floor really? party? Yeah. We Walter like Ford, stamp. Ball State, third floor. Yeah. <laughs> But females, they do it totally different. I got female best friends. They they told me. Y'all be setting Facebook events, <laughs> having fucking parties, you know what I'm saying? Have some ice cream. Okay, girl. We're going to get you a husband today. Come on. <laughs> no, no, look at his hair. Uh-uh. And, and if I could be honest, I didn't even like parties. I yeah. liked... I liked... Socializing. I liked, it looked, it was like my baby, like a creation. And I liked creating something that gave all of my friends and loved ones a reason for to come together and have a good time. Aww. Did and you I, think I looked that at it in, in your that. head? Yeah, like you consciously. you thought it that way. Consciously, that was like my Aww. pleasure, I guess you could say, or like what I got out of it. It wasn't like money or like getting fucked so up would, or, so or like say, having sex or nothing like that. Would you say this pandemic has affected you then? Because it's like we can't bring those giant groups of people together i mean we're slowly getting closer to it now but it's like what you envisioned it's it's hard to do right now 100 percent, 100 percent. i mean yeah with comedy too it's like weird i was doing i ain't gonna lie to you i was doing it outside the whole time i know well hey i got invited to comedy shows on the beach outside that's when we I met went to your comedy show i know yeah but that was the best thing because there was nothing to do we couldn't go anywhere we're on lockdown we're in california and they're like, hey, come do a comedy show on the beach with tiki torches. I'm like, okay, it looks like Survivor, but I'll be there. <laughs> it did look like Survivor. Or, uh, it uh, seriously or was like, Fear Factor. Like, all the tiki torches were surrounding. But hey, I was there. 
<gasps> and I was ready for it because there was nothing to do. And it's I didn't go there just because there was nothing to do. It was fun. And honestly, I would prefer it on the beach. Like I would rather be outside on the beach watching a comedy show than in like a tight air conditioned, it's too cold. Like I like it yeah. outside. Like I prefer that. So yeah, I, I liked actually it. I thought it worked out. I appreciate my mama too. Cause like you said, my name is Walter Ford. I got a white uncle name. <laughs> my pop's last name though, his last name was McNutt and kids are mean. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if my name was Walter McNutt. Uh, I was kicked out of Ball State because I threw so many parties. No. I didn't do my homework. Oh yeah. You were I, kicked out? Hell yes. Yeah, I didn't do. I didn't. We didn't do homework he at all. He was in this hat and kicked I didn't, out. I didn't do no homework at all. I was throwing parties oh, and having fun. Oh no. So I used Sterling ID oh, number. I was Patrick like, Mahomes named his baby Sterling. <laughs> Funny as fuck. Kansas City Chiefs. Number. I wasn't even a student at Ball State, and I went and did. Uh, a comedy show on April Fool's Day of 2015 was the first time I did stand up. Yeah, yeah. And I killed it from just, I didn't know what I was going to say. I just he like. didn't kill it. He killed it. Killed. Killed with a T. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to say. I just went up there and told some stories about you Granny in my life. You didn't know what you were going to say. No, you fuck no. You just winged it. Yeah, fuck yeah. Okay. And everybody was like, yo, that was hilarious. <laughs> you should keep doing it. Okay. And then I kept doing it. <laughs> now, remember back in the day, what well, y'all might not know, but black people on the internet back in the day on MySpace, they never put their real name. It was like, I got all the money for <laughs> fuck bitches get money Johnson. <laughs> Where can somebody see you next for a comedy show if they're watching this right now? Where can they see you? And if they're watching this late, where can they see you in the future? Cool. Uh, if this is coming out in May, I'm going to be at the American Comedy Company on May 26th. May 26th. May 26th, ACC. ACC. And then I'm producing my own show. It's called Double Shot Comedy Show. It's the only spot in San Diego, not in a club, where you have two rooms simultaneously doing comedy. Um, and that's going to be May 28th. That's a Friday, Friday right. night. Where's that at? That's going to be at the Music Company in Pacific oh, Beach. Oh, Music Company. Um, and then if you want to... I also do a podcast. Uh, oh, it's, it's podcast. rooted in activism, um, but we, it's more so about uh, current events, and also my part of it. I'm into personal development, so it's a lot of personal development and motivation, motivational speaking in it. Uh, What's the name? Of it? It's called the Activated Podcast. You can find activated. us. Activate, act, activated. Activate. Deactivated. Deactivated podcast. Okay. Yeah, so you... Check it out sometime. Um, and if you want to follow me, I'm. Uh, at Real Walter Ford, Real. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, uh, Farmers Only, whatever you got. Wait, Farmers Only? You're <laughs> not, I mean, he's got the hat. He's got it's like a beach hat, though. He uh, could be on Christian Mingle, <laughs> Bumble, I, mommy on Christian Mingle. J Swipe, <laughs> J Swipe, what Black is that? Planet. What is J Swipe? Have you been on Black Planet? <laughs> like, okay. Like in 08. <laughs> Black Planet. Nobody on Black Planet since 2009. Listen. Salud. <laughs> it's called Soul Swipe now. Well, I'm going to end it on that, y'all. I want to tell y'all I appreciate you more than you can imagine. The reason that I do stand-up comedy is because I want to show you can come from a negative place and have a positive outcome. I appreciate y'all so much. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Walter Ford, the comedian. And we showed you where you can see him. And if you want to tune in to more guests, just subscribe to the A-List and tell me more guests that you want me to interview on my patio. Thanks for watching. Bye. Stay blessed. Stay out the way. Boop. <laughs>